One of my great Swamiji used to say this, that already there is no clean water available. My childhood, I remember, we could drink right from the tap. And now you have to have an RO, a machine which will do a job, and that machine does such a crappy job, because it leaches out all the minerals, and then adds artificial minerals into that, and those chemicals are so hazardous for the body, that it leaches out good bacteria, leaches out the calcium, the, the calcium from your bones. It leaches out calcium from your bones. So, in today's world, your tap water, even after filtering, is the most dangerous thing. And the access to water is just going away. Um, for one state in North India, Punjab, there is only water left for next 15 years. And in Karnataka, down south, the city called Bangalore is like the Silicon Valley of India. It's already facing such a drastic paucity of potable water that people have to order their water tankers. And the tanker price fixed by government is, I think, so 600 rupees, but it's being sold from... 1500 to 2000 rupees. So people are bathing after one day. And you can't wash your cars and you can't give water to your gardens. It's, it's fine, it's a fine if you do that. So people have like half a million dollar worth apartment, but there is no water. The people are moving out of their own places, which they made their, their fancy penthouses and their fancy condos and their fancy nice standalone cottages and houses in, in the golf uh, courses and no water. So Kali Yuga is the dark ages out of the four yugas. So this makes it more challenging that what you are seeing now around you is nothing. It's not even a sample of how the things would be. Like the climate is moving in a, such a disastrous style that the places which used to have snow, this year, this last year, 2023, no snow. The places where it's unheard of and rains were happening in UAE, unheard of. The ocean water is rising and they say that maybe in 10 to 15 years, all the coastal cities, wherever, they will be submerged in the ocean because the ocean water is rising. So, beginning from you know Mumbai to Chennai to all these places is a possibility because the water is rising in oceans. Glaciers are melting at so fast speed. One of my very good friends, Swami Sundaranand, was in Gangotri. And um, one of my another Swami friend had mentioned about him. So when I was in Gangotri, I think so four years ago, I went to see him and he was like the avid photographer of Himalayas. And he had pictures like what Gangotri, the Gomukh glacier was 30 years ago. And it was all blue ice. And as far as you can see, it's all ice. And in 30 years, it has melted in such a speed but now there is no more blue ice. It's just a very small sized glacier from where the Ganga is coming. That glacier is receding at such a great speed that um, it was like jaw dropping to see those old photos. And heart will bleed when you see the present photos. 
And that's not the one place. I was in Alaska, I think so, in 2016. And again, I got to see the pictures of Alaska, how it was 10 years ago. And now what we saw with our eyes, it's like a big chunk of ice has melted. What you see is the, the rocks and the hard surface and the lot of marine life has been destroyed. The Australian reef is suffering. The, the Mauritian reefs are suffering because somewhere here some uh, oil ship you know, some leakage happens and then thousands of gallons just goes in the ocean. And all the garbage which we humans are producing is being dumped in the ocean. And all those people who love to eat the fish, now the fish is becoming the, the uh, second most polluted thing to eat because it has so much of mercury in it and there are traces of plastic in the fish bodies. So the advisory by in certain areas is now is that if don't eat fish. And if you, so the point is, the things are running bad. It's a very gory picture. We might not want to accept it, we might not want to acknowledge it. And all the developed countries who are responsible of making the biggest chunk of garbage are not ready to accept and the, their fallacy and they're putting all the blame onto the developing countries and they say, you don't do this, you don't do this. It's like bullying the, the developing countries and what developed countries are, are doing is, you know, if you go through those papers, then it's a very sad story. That's how the humans are killing the earth. Um, all the big shots, you know, the fashionistas, they carry a baby calf leather purse and then crocodile leather purse. Then they have the, the cobra snake skin purse. And then they have these, you know, the furry beings are, are killed for their furs. And so those furs are being used to make shoes and coats and whatnot. So the humans can be so selfish and so in, humans are inhuman. Let's put it like this. Why I'm speaking? I'm just giving a, a statutory warning to all that the goodness of human life is only then when our earth is good, in a healthy state. So reducing the Carbon footprint is very important. That's why I'm all for organic. And you have seen we grow our organic vegetables, we grow our millets, we grow our seeds for oil and make our own oil over here, the cold pressed ones. We recycle, we recycle our garbage. We have uh, uh, the vermicompost where we are using the, the, the worms, that they eat the leftovers and then give us a wonderful manure. So times are very shocking and it will get more shocking. So the, the point is that be more aggressive in your sadhana. Be more powerful in passing on this message through your lives. So 
grow and eat organic. Keep your not just water and air pollution free, but your mind pollution free. Hatred, greed, ego, ignorance, ajnana, remove that. And bringing more love and compassion and servitude and humanity. And to achieve all this, getting right, correct knowledge from the scripture, Bhagavad Gita, Upanishad, becomes very, very important. <laughs>